Well, what's going on, everybody? It's day 166, making Songbringer. And um, got the teleport all finished up, and today I'm going to be working on mountains. So I will show off the teleport a little bit. I'm quite, quite proud of how it turned out. It's even got that little animation where he picks it up and everything. Yeah, so this idea for drawing mountains. I'm going to start with the image, like a backgroundy kind of image. Just fill it. Fill it with some gray. Hey, what's up, Momir? Happy Saturday. Or Sunday, if it's Sunday for you already. And I'm going to grab the existing rocks. The pillars are really good. Actually, the thing that I'm kind of looking for. What's happening? There it goes. What's up, Big Mac, King Nothing, Wukong? Yes, Wukong, I do. You have a certain question about iOS? It's already Sunday. All right, so yeah, here's my idea. I'm gonna take hexagonal shapes and create, actually, like, I'm just gonna start with this, this pillar right here. Like if this were taller, this would be about what I was thinking. Let's get the player on this image too. Like idle south or the sheath. South maybe. There, so now we have a good feeling for about how high the player is. Uh, if you don't have a Mac, it's going to be really difficult to make iOS apps. Unity? What, what kind of apps do you want to make? Because that also de de totally would change what tools you would use. Yeah, Momer, it doesn't quite work on Linux yet, but it's such a it's so close to working on Linux. All I gotta do is try it really, um, and hook up the right commands into the RapidGame.js file to actually just pre-build it. So um, it's pretty close, and in one of the next releases, we'll have that working. So I'm thinking of taking these pillars type rocks. Making them about the same height as the player.
Oh, you want to create mobile games? Do you want to make 3D mobile games or 2D mobile games? Cool. Thanks, Big Mac Dev. Now, if these become hexagons, I need these to be about the right width and height, and then I'm going to make these sort of hexagonal shaped, and that will kind of be this, the foundation for creating mountains. Oh. Oh, no error message either? Weird. I thought I put something in there that disallowed it from even running on Linux. Like, um, let's set the platforms. Oh, okay, so I did change the OS to Linux. Uh, that's my bad. I guess I was starting to work on Linux and then I left some of that stuff working then. Oh, sorry about that, Momir. Yeah, I'll get that working pretty soon. I also got a buddy helping me, Sam. He might be doing some of it too, so. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking at making 2D games. Well, hopefully that link helps you there. Um, Cause I was gonna recommend Unity, but that's 3D. Unity is cross-platform, and you can run it on Windows or Mac. But um, other than that, man, your options are kind of limited when you you're trying to develop for iOS without a Mac. It's kind of kind of difficult. So I, I I would highly recommend getting a Mac myself, just like these guys were saying. It's totally worth it, man. If you really, if you're really serious about making iOS and games, I would, yeah, I wouldn't even try and do it without a Mac myself. All right. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Alex Pita? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, if you want to look at it, it might you might be able to get it working. Um, and here's let me show you uh, where that app the that code would be. Um, basically, all that has to happen is to hook up the the right command. To pre-build the JS or pre-build um, Linux, and um, if you're in RapidGame.js, there's this command called or this function called pre-build. Here it is, pre-build, and then there's pre-build Mac. No, it's not that one. It's called it's not setup pre-build. It's called run prebuild. Here it is. What's up, Marengia? And then so run prebuild checks your current platform. Like if it's Darwin, it does this kind of prebuild. If it's Win32, it does this kind of prebuild. 
So this is the error. It should, it should have given you this error on Linux. It should have said, hey, we haven't written a pre-build command for that platform. But um, essentially, all you would do is hook up, hook up some methods a lot like this. Like if platform... You know, this is the default right here. So you would say if process.platform equals Linux, then run these pre-build commands. And then you're gonna have to basically write a similar method to like this var pre-build Mac. Um, this basically creates an array and then calls next build. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of if you wanted to explore it, that's where you would start basically in the run pre-build command. And all all that's really has to happen is to write the right call the right make script that actually builds Linux or builds Cocoa City X on Linux. And I just haven't got I haven't sent, spent the time to actually do that. But it's very close. It's very close to working. What's up, Letality? Uh, today I'm drawing some mountains. Oh, if you guys haven't seen, uh, I did finish the teleport and I'm really, really excited about how it all turned out too, so I'll show you that. So um you can have your sword out or or whatever it smartly puts it away the player even bends down and picks up the, the other teleport cube <clears throat> um, yeah he can be facing any direction north south I love how the sounds turned out too. Oh, cool, man! Good for you. Nice. That's a great, uh, great language to start with, C sharp. Or I mean, just a great language to know in general. What's up, Digital Dev? Okay. So if I have this hexagonal light shape. Let's see what happens when I start like piling these on top of each other. Nice, you started working on your game. Good for you, man. Right on. How how'd you uh, how'd you go? So you're saying you had fun while you coded, or? Yeah, this kind of works. This is what I was imagining. Sort of like these hexagons piled together to create mountains. Azarus, what's up, man? Well, good news. I didn't even stream on Friday. So you only missed Thursday. And I was working on the teleport. And I could show you how it turned out. Oh. So what? Game programming is not your thing or what? Or Java is not your thing? So Azarus, here's the um, here's the teleport anim. 
Looks like a giant's causeway. Sweet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You were at, were you asking about? I can't. I can't. Sorry. I I have a very short memory when it comes to um basically anything but writing my own game. So um, refresh me my memory or whatever. What do you What do you um Are you wanting to write a game engine or a game? So here's the, this is the final teleport. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Um, he will put away his sword. So if you have your sword out, he puts it away, drops the cube, the cube opens up, the light happens, the shader happens to the, to the screen, the player warps away, the screen fades out, the screen fades back in, the player warps back in, the player then picks up the cube. There's like so many pieces to this, but, now that it's all done, it's looking pretty good. I'm loving it. So you use these cubes to warp back to your ship, Songbringer. So you they're paired. There's always one cube goes with another cube. And when you set off on your very the start of your adventure, you leave one of your cubes on your ship, so that's why you can always get back to it. Thanks. Yeah, this is a good question. Letality, what language are you used to? Yeah, I would highly recommend using a game engine for sure. Um, if you're in Java, you got LiveGDX and what's the other Java engine? I don't know. There's LiveGDX. You could tr you could try that. I know there's other ones too. So if there's anybody else that knows of a Java game engine, please shout out. There's a yeah. I remember hearing about it on one of the streams the other day. Somebody was talking about using one, but I can't remember if it was that engine was still around or not. Oh yeah, there is Coco Studio X. Well, Coco Studio JavaScript. If you like JavaScript, I know there's totally different languages, but um, you know. So, have you ever programmed a game before, or what? What kind of programming experience do you have? Hello, Game Vivo. Fresh Llama, what's up, man? Yes, this is my full-time gig. Um, it started off as a full-time thing. Um, but I was making no money and I had no money. So I did a Kickstarter and thanks to all these incredible people, um, it got funded. So I have enough funds to continue developing this game full time until at least the new year. And that's about when I'm going to be releasing the game. So there you go. Thanks to Karki. De Karki. I think I said it right. Yeah. So there you go. Slick 2D. What are you talking about, Game Evo? Are you talking about ideas that are better than Facebook? In what way? What do you mean ideas that are better than Facebook? Yeah, it's totally awesome. Totally awesome. So, um, I think this is going to work. 
just piling up these pillars like this, I can create mountains. So I'm going to start trying it actually right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy another one of these over here. And this is going to be my base building block. I'm going to start playing with this whole concept. Oh, actually, before I do this, I do want to try drawing a some greenery, some kind of plant on these. So I'm going to get, oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just create a green color rather than trying to go pick a green color from my existing drawings. <clears throat> Something green like like this. Actually, I'm going to start with the shading of it. Oh, Mr. Laguma, of course. Of course they're going to have lots of variation. This is just me playing. You literally see me draw this for five minutes, and I'm playing around with the whole concept before I go and create a lot of variety. So, um, Also, I'm going to take one single pillar and put it into the code with only a single one of them to get the code right before I go also and create a whole bunch of pillars. So yes, of course these look horrible because they're not, they're not at all done yet. There needs to be a lot more variety. And in fact, they're not even going to be pillar shaped either. Some of these are going to be shaped totally like sides of rock. Some of them are going to be lumpy. Some of them might look like faces. Who knows? Can there be something better than Facebook one day as a social network? Of course. There's Twitter already. Uh, Momir, yeah, can you climb them up? No, uh, I'm not thinking you're going to be able to climb these. It's more of a background thing. <clears throat> Yeah, keep playing. Keep playing, man. Keep playing around with it and don't try and feel don't feel like you have to stick to one thing or whatever. You're you're at this stage right now where you really should be experimenting with different game engines, experiment with different languages and keep experimenting until you settle on something that you really love, you know? That you're really attracted to, that you resonate with. It's like this is this is my jam. This is my game engine. This is what I want to do. Want to use. What's up, professional novice? Game Eagle, you keep on asking the same question over and over, and I just answered you, man. Hey, Game Vivo, um, yo, if you're a troll, I'm gonna be banning you pretty soon. So, um, look, if you start, don't start saying something else or start proving that you're a real person. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Mind Rage, yes, I'm a wizard. Yes. I can um I can disappear. See, I'm still here. I can disappear totally. Giant's Causeway, huh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. 
Oh, check it out. Led Zeppelin did a, did one on this. Yeah, this is exactly what I was thinking. Something like this. Cool. All right, so yeah, I'm drawing this little leaf first. Just to get a feeling for, yeah, see, this is also going to add a lot of variety to these kind of things too, is adding some like foliage to them as well. <clears throat> All right, okay. Um, well, I mean, for now, he's not being a dick, so I can't, I'm not gonna ban Game Vivo unless he starts being a total dick. So, um, but yeah, if he's still bothering you guys, let me know. <clears throat> and what's up, Encrypted Cow? All right, okay. Yeah, foliage could look really good. Could really have help um help this all out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this single rock pillar thingy here. I'm gonna start coding some mountains that are gonna look like this. So I'm gonna just call this one something. I don't know. Um, yeah, so what should this be called? Sheets, rocks, I guess I'll call it mountain. Mountain hex zero or something. There. Um, I don't know. I don't know, Game Vivo. Cool, yeah, I've heard great things about Unreal. Yeah. I can't believe they made it free now, too. That's awesome. Yeah, Dikarki, I'm drawing with the tablet. I definitely do not recommend drawing with a mouse. It's horrible to draw with the mouse. It's slow. You can't you don't have as much articulation. What's up, Proton Gaming? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start doing this, the code part. Um, I've got that one rock exported, and I'm gonna start making a hexagonally sort of shaped rocks to go with it, so. The first thing would be to start using rocks that way. Just experimenting with this all. So area creation. Where it creates rocks. Hey, thank you for following.
So slow. Random component. Okay, so I called this thing uh, mountain hex zero dot ping. Its parent is area layer z is one. Yeah, and it needs a new collision component as well. This is tile size. Okay, so this is gonna be a totally experimental rock style. Yeah, Proton, I did. Yeah, let me show it to you. Yeah, Mr. Laguma, yeah, I agree. It's gonna take a while to implement all this though. So that doesn't look that good yet. Oh, one thing is it needs to be colored completely differently. And they need to be arranged hexagonally. And then they need to be stacked on top of each other, depending on where they are. So here's the new, t there's the teleport effect. All finished. And like I was saying earlier, it's a lot of steps that go into this thing. The player has to put away his sword, drop the cube, the cube opens up, the light opens up, the player teleports away, jib teleports away, the player picks the cube back up. So there's a lot of like, there's a lot of code going on here to make all this happen. Okay, so I'm going to start um, stacking these pillars on top of each other so they create height. Uh, Fresh Llama, yeah, I use C++, man. Okay, so if a rock tile has rock tiles all around it, then it should have two on top of each other. Yeah, okay, so I'll do a height. So what I got to do here is find the height of that this should be. So if a, if a rock tile is single and alone, it's only going to be have a height of one. But if it has rock tiles all around it, then that middle one is going to be too high. And then if it has two tiles, all surrounding it then it has the ability to be three tiles tall so that way they all kind of stack up on each other based on how many rocks there are uh proton i already have that done man check it out you can turn on the full hud So you've got everything from, you know, your map, your number of rupees, not rupees, but diamonds, all that kind of stuff's already there. Actually, this level right there was a pretty good place to be for this whole figuring out these um, rocks, these mountains. Zero P, the position was seven one zero uh no nope I got it off yeah good question I got it off of um stack overflow let me show you exactly what I do for deterministic random numbers So here I have um, I have a, my own seed function. I also have a set DRAND index because I found that 
it's really nice when you're using deterministic rands to be able to set the current index that you have into it. So it's not it's not changing the entire seed, but it is changing the index into them. So um, here's the DRAND function. Let me show you. And let me see if I can get the link for you. Yeah, it's the Tosworth algorithm. That's right. But it's basically this code right here. This is the term deterministic rand number function. Is this is the you define Tosworth? This is the, the Tosworth random number generator algorithm, and this is totally deterministic. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. This will um, create the same exact random numbers. So that's it. It takes three state variables. You see, there's a DRAND state one, DRAND state two, DRAND state three, and then. Every time it does another random number, it plays with the three different seeds. See that? It does this. It applies the Tosworth algorithm to every single seed. And all these numbers are kind of magic. I don't know how the heck this algorithm really works. I just know that it does. Because I've tested it pretty heavily with my last game, Hero Bash, um, which was cross-platform. So, yeah, this is it right here. And I know I found this on Stack Overflow. I just can't remember where. Uh, encrypted cat, what's my favorite thing to program? Probably general, right now at least, is there's general gameplay stuff, like creating new items. So fun. Like creating a tuck and roll. You know, like I can't wait to create all the items. that I want to camera, and drawing you know, um, new things and then putting them in. I guess, you know, it's, my favorite thing about game development in general is the blending of all the the art forms. I used to be just a programmer, so I guess I would have had a better better answer for you for that a long time ago. But now, now that I'm doing the art and the music too, it's like all of them kind of combined. I don't know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, Proton, it does. Um, but I have it at 30 for the debug mode because my live stream slows down like crazy bad if I put it at 60. So I can run it at 60. In fact, I'll, I can try and show you, but you're not going to see any difference because my stream to you guys is only at 15 frames a second. So yes, the game totally runs at 60 frames a second, but what you're seeing it at is 15, and what I'm playing it at by default is 30. But when you when I release it, when I compile it in release mode, it's always at 60. As it should be. It's a simple 2D game. Um, the shaders are the one thing that really kind of are, are slowing it down as far as... I know, isn't that crazy? They I read an article about this um, that they said that some, some um, studios were saying it's more cinematic if the game runs at 30 frames a second. But really, I think it's just technical limitations that they're not able to overcome. I don't know. Yeah. So their excuse is it's more cinematic. What's up, Betavel? Because they hate gamers. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to switch to code mode. I'm putting away my art pen. And I'm going to start stacking these pillars on top of each other and get the algorithm done first for how these pillars will stack on top of each other. So I don't think you guys are going to be able to tell the difference at all, but this is definitely running at 60 frames a second. My eyes can see how smooth this is, but you guys probably can't because it's, once again, it's 15 frames a second for you guys. But so do you see that? Yeah, I wish you guys could see this, but yeah, it's just, it's hella smooth. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to go back to debug mode, put it back at 30 frames a second, and I'm going to start stacking these pillars on top of each other. The first thing that has to happen is to count how many pillars high they're supposed to be. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Probably, right? Yeah. If You can still run in 60 frames a second on consoles.
I think. I don't know. I guess I haven't I haven't programmed a console and so I don't wouldn't know. Okay, so first thing, let's count how many pillars So we'll go in height. No, I can't I can't do height. I've already got a member right with height. So h equals zero, h is less than, let's say three is the maximum height for one of these rock um mountainy conglomeration of pillary rocks. So there. So we're looping over height zero to height three. Actually we're gonna start at height one. So, and then once we're at height one, we're going to go for int um, xx equals negative one, well, negative h, xx less than h, no, less than or equal to h, xx plus plus, something similar for y. So what we're going to do is check all the tiles around it to see how high we can get. What's up, Felix? Uh, yeah, I think that that's the one, that's the article I read about, Arkham Knight, where they're running at 30 frames. Oh, okay. Interesting. That's weird. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. What would I rather? Yeah, I guess I'd rather have 60 frames a second to 720 than, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so hmm. It would almost be easier to do this as a as a function. Let's make it a lambda, I guess. Oh, initial yes, yeah, I'm initializing H on its own line so I can return it. <clears throat> but now I guess I don't need to, now that I'm doing a function. So if the current tile isn't a rock, then we need to return the current height. What do you think about that? If the height starts at one, it's gonna go from negative one. Yes, yeah, so we need to return height minus one. Thank you for following. And then otherwise, if it gets through all this, then we return H.
So if it's totally surrounded, Yeah, I guess this will. Hmm. I guess we'll see how this works out. <laughs> right? I know. That's why I'm so excited about Retro VGS. There's never going to be a Retro VGS 2. That's what's so great about it. Okay, so this thing is going to have a bunch of different. Um, sprites added to the top of it so for we'll go we'll get the current height so int h equals get height x y each one of these will do a kit sprite Position is going to be the current pause plus about 30. So I think that's going to be 10, 30. Anchor vec to 0 0.5, 0 0.0. Parent is going to be E or render of sprites. So we need to render. Render equals entity get render component for entities out back. Now this is the render dot sprite and the Z is going to be one or actually no it's going to be one plus I. So the ones on top are the highest. Let's see if this even works. I have no idea if this is going to work for the H and all that. All right, Encrypted Cow, man. Have fun. What's up, Hyrule Spy? Welcome. Oh, another thing that would be really help all these is if I started coloring these the right. Color desaturate. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is stack rocks on top of each other in a hexagonal shape pattern but right now they're just going to be square patterns and I have no idea if this is even going to work as far as stacking them on top of each other yeah so it didn't work that's it put them everywhere and this thing I can pass in the color as well so that's going to be parent z color I can get him grab the color here, so parent Z color. Okay, so now the thing is just making sure this height is correct. Yeah, letality, yep, I checked that out. I don't know if you recommended it or somebody else recommended it last stream or so, but yeah, I checked out No Man's Sky and it looks freaking awesome. That's one of the coolest like exploration games I've ever seen. Um, definitely, definitely looking forward to playing that at some point. Nope. Yeah, Azarus, you don't. You can. You can, but you don't have to. It's inferred. All right. So, what the heck's wrong with this whole? Get height algorithm. I guess I'll just set up. I'll set a breakpoint here. The first one. We'll figure out why. Oh, pfft. duh! I already see what's wrong. Okay, so it's supposed to be um, x plus xx, and this is y plus yy. At least that that's gonna break it a little less. So if this makes them stack on top of each other, I'm gonna I'm gonna woo for joy. Oh yay! It's it's kind of working. 
don't know why they're darker though. Hmm. Oh, I think I know what's what's wrong with this one. This should be um, render.sprite.getContentSize.width times a half. Uh, hi, rules by yeah, I'm working on this right now, man. Yep, there's not that, that is not intentional. I'm trying to get this algorithm to work first. So yeah, so that you're you're totally right. I need to make them lower for sure. At least now they're X centered. Why did they turn out to be so high? Because I measured this distance to be 30. But that turned out to be far too high. I mean I guess I'll just try 20. But no. If I don't think about what's wrong with this, it'll just Hmm. Uh. Oh. Oh, okay, it was an optical illusion. So yeah, 30 was correct. See, these are actually being stacked. Oh, maybe now, wait a minute. This could be white, actually. It might need to be white. I'm not sure. Uh, no, I don't think I, I don't think it is reverse. That's a good question, though. Yeah, the get height is intended is intended to get the height, not the distance to the next rock, but the amount of rocks around it. So, so on the outside. It should be a height of zero and as you go one in and everything is surrounded by one row of rocks that one should be too high and then as it's surrounded by two sets of rocks that one should be too high and then three high so it creates like a mountain style that's really all that's really all I'm trying to do with this algorithm here and then I'll work on the art and make the art really cool for it already you can see this is starting to give more more depth to the game though. This is really cool. Yeah, so for some reason, if I specify this color here, maybe it's the shader that it's currently using that makes it so much darker. I don't know why it's so dark. Yeah, okay, so getting this get height function I need to work on because it's only doing it's only doing one one row of height, is that correct? Oh well, maybe it's supposed to be less than or equal to height down there. And thirty is a bit too tall, tiny bit too tall. So we'll do twenty-eight. And um, let's see if this making this less than or equal to height. Okay, yeah, that didn't work. I might need to make these separate render components actually. So that what must be happening here is that height is only ever coming out back to be one. Uh, 
Thanks for following. Okay, I mean, I guess we could break here on this um, on this very screen. What's up, McDolan's Games? I'm creating a game called Songbringer, and it's a lot like Zelda 1, except that it's procedurally generated. So I'm working on this new art style for rocks right now, where these rocks are supposed to be piled together to create sort of like this kind of effect where they're piled together. So I'm just working on it right now to get this algorithm to work. And then I'll start working on the art. So the art will look a lot better than these. Just These look really ugly right now. Hmm. So it's succeeding. It's succeeding for sure for the first row. But the second row, it never gets higher. Um, what if I set this to be to allow it to go a little higher, like maybe four. You would think that would still break. Yeah, still does it. It's weird. Okay, well, okay, so if I set height to always be, say, two, does it create two tiles taller? Uh, no, I shouldn't need to call get height recursively. See there, I've exposed the bug. The reason, see that? Even though I set height to be 2, it didn't draw 2 tiles taller. Reuse the h value? No. No, this is a lambda function here. It's a lambda function. Thanks, Iron Scissor. Yeah, I got it's getting better, right? Here, so if I set this to three, then we should see two we should see three total um rocks on top of each other. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to divide and conquer here, see whether it's the drawing. See there, it's the drawing. But I just set that to three, and it only it still only created two of them. Okay, well, so why is it only creating two of them? Oh, duh! It's because the position needs to be 28 times i. Okay, cool. So let's see if this actually is working, or was working the whole time. Yeah, there we go. So... Okay, wait, the first one, oh, 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 it needs to be times i plus one. Uh, Chris is slot, yes, yeah, the full time. I started it off full time, I was broke, and thanks to everybody here on the stream. Uh, the Kickstarter got successfully funded, and now I have enough funds to continue doing this full time until at least the new year, so... Um, the game's coming out first quarter of 2016. It's like January, February, March. It's coming out on Steam. It's already been greenlit. It's got the funds it needs. And yeah, I'm just continuing to work on it full time. There we go. So it all works. So you see those, even though they're the wrong color, for some reason, I can't figure out why they're the different color, but they're stacked on top of each other. We got this nice mountain here in the beginning, in the middle of the screen now. Um... And if they were the same color, you would see that they they would look a little bit better as far as, um, they wouldn't look so much like they're 
too high. So one thing that can certainly be done to this is to play a little bit with the um, the X and the Y position of the, the actual sprite. Uh, Chris, man, I can't, I can't tell you that answer. I have no idea. You never know. You never know. At least I've never known how well a certain um, game will do until I release it. You know, I thought my last game, Hero Bash, would kick ass. I thought it would make me a millionaire or whatever. And it turns out it's only made $20 a month for the last two years. So, you know, I hope the Songbringer will do well. In fact, there's a lot more interest. In fact, I'm doing the marketing for this one. So, um, this time I'm, I feel like I'm doing the marketing right. So I do have higher hopes for this game than my last game. Um, but you know what? I try not to get my hopes up. And in, in that sense, um, I'm never let down. So I try to never ever think about this question. How many do I think that this will succeed? How much money do I think it will make? In fact, anything that it does make will be better than nothing. So I'm just going to be thankful and grateful for whatever the heck it makes. What's up, Pema? Uh, Panic, no, they, they're not shadowing themselves. That's good. That's a really good thought. Thank you, Panic. But um, they don't have a shadow component. See, they just have a position, a render, and a collision. So that, yeah, if they had a shadow component, that would be the first thing to take off. But I have a feeling that, that they're, they're a child of the sprite um, in front of them. So that's why, or they're a child of the sprite. They're a child of this render component. So maybe since this render component has a color, that's why they're like that. I don't know. Uh, Hi, Rules Pie. Yeah, the game's already got YouTuber coverage, and um, and it'll get more and more and more as it comes out for sure. But yeah, you can ch you can already check out YouTube coverage of this game. Um, if you go to the Kickstarter page, there's some links um, to. The certain videos that were they got filmed during the whole Kickstarter, like randomized user. Here's one. This is a really really funny one because he's if you ever if you ever seen randomized users, um, you like let's play videos. They're great. There's they're hilarious and so are the Button Masher Bros. Both these people are freaking hilarious and they did their own playthroughs on Songbringer. Yeah, Iron Scissor, I'm going to. Um, this this game, once I release it on Steam, that's just the beginning. The the release on Steam is just like is a whole year. There's gonna be a whole year worth of development after I first release it. Um, and that's gonna be getting it on iOS, um, possibly Android, PlayStation 4, and Xbox, and also for sure Retro VGS. So those two, there's gonna be a lot of po uh, porting to go on and testing and stuff. What's up, Ethan? Yeah, yeah, it does have a lot of a lot of comments, a lot of discussions, a lot of interest already developed. So yeah, I'm, I. But like I said, if I created expectations for it right now, like oh, I expect that it will make about this much money, or I expect that I will at least make a living. Um, those expectations create limitations. That's a, that's what I believe. Every expectation is a limitation, and that's why I strive not to have them. Yeah, Dekarki, good question. I don't they shouldn't they shouldn't have any kind of alpha in the actual um Yeah, they're a hundred percent. I'm pretty sure that it's because they are um a child of this one sprite here that's being colored. So if I turn off the color and set the render component to empty for the base one. And then I set these mountain hex ones to draw just plus i or times i, and then set these to be colored. I think that's what will make them all color correctly. So I think what was happening is it was being colored twice. So the parent had its own color. The child somehow was affected by the color of the parent, 
but we'll see if that if that's the truth but from this yay there see it worked just setting them to be um just yeah they're not a child of a, of a colored sprite so i need to make sure this is less than or equal to height there now that we're doing that Uh, Sergeant Sam, this is you're seeing seven months into the game already. So, um, yeah, it's been developed since November. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. I guess this is like the eighth month already. And there's going to be at least, you know, six or seven more months till, till the first release. And like I said, there's going to be a whole year after that of porting it. So this is a long project. And it's mostly because I'm a solo guy. I do all the art, I do the code, I do the set, the music and sound and everything. And what's great about that is I can totally nail the aesthetic and nobody tells me what to do. I can do whatever the hell I want. Um, but the bad part about that is I'm not as fast as I would be if I were a kick-ass two-man team or a three-man team or a four-man team or whatever. So as you can see, this has really added a lot of depth to the screen. Even though this, these are all the same color and they're all bland and I am not even haven't even haven't even randomized how they will look and stuff like that um it's still adding a lot of depth like see how much like height there there feels like there is here in this screen now this is really cool so i'm thinking these might actually be a little too tall of bases for this <clears throat> hmm what's up achillium Whoa, dang. Five gig, yeah, I have a lot of those too, man. All Yeah, like every repo, right, is about five gigs now. That's how mine are. Even even though I, I like, even though I strip down the repo every once in a while, they still five gigs. All right, Letality, see you, man. Uh, Chris is so slawed. I stream every single day for a good hour or two or three. So, um, but I don't stream everything. No, you're not seeing me. me I, I work eight to 10 hours a day, but I can't stream all of them because it's just, I do a lot of, ch of chatting with people and stopping what I do and stuff like that. So when you're seeing me work here on the live stream, I'm working at about half the speed that I normally do. So I need that other time of the day, those other six to seven hours to just go as fast as I can and create whatever the heck I want and like, you know, basically work quickly. Yeah, it's starting to give us some depth, but it definitely needs some variety now. Oh yeah, Momir, that's what's that's what's so great about live streaming for me. I know what you mean when it's when you're working totally alone, but al also when you're when you've built a following for your game, um, that also gives you a sense of community around it. So I don't feel alone. I don't. That's why I, I don't. I stay motivated because I know there's people that are already really stoked to play this game, and also I get to hang out with you guys. So that's like, um, it's not really like I'm working all of it solo. So I know what you mean though. Jib sword? What do you mean, jib sword? Oh, you mean the player's sword, rock sword? No, it's not. It's not um, pixel perfect. It's squares. I can give you a little visual so you can understand what I'm talking about here. But yeah, they're all rectangles. Yeah, Dakarki, he does fly through pillars right now. He does not have any kind of collision, and I just like him like that because he. Um, there's a lot of cases where he needs to catch up, and I don't want him getting lost right now. So that's why I've left him just flying through whatever the heck he wants. Uh, right on, Achillium. Cool, man. That's awesome. So yeah, here's what it looks like when I show the debugging. So when I turn on debug, you can see all these little red squares are, um, are collisions, so like are areas that could collide. And then when I swing the sword, it shows an orange box where the actual hitbox is for the sword. So as you can see, nothing in this game is pixel perfect. It's all using squares. It's old school like that. Oh, totally, right? Yeah. 
I definitely recommend using an engine for sure. She is a boss. That's right. Okay, so I was planning on making these these tiles hexagonal in shape, and so they would have some layered behind them as well. And they need to have a wider height or a base. Okay, so I'm gonna start playing with this art. Cool. Come on, Arpan, come back to me. Yeah, you got a few more years in you. Stay with me. Hey. Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be kind of giant so that you you can actually connect because the it's actually a really quick, fast-paced game. You actually can run into enemies quite easily, a lot like Zelda One. No, Adevel, I'm not. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I did optimize the uh, the collision engine though, so it's actually quite fast the way it is already, and there's not really that much there's not really that many entities on screen that you would need to use a quad tree. But perhaps one day I will actually up, upgrade this and make it even faster and use quad trees or something. Yes, Chris, I'm standing up. <clears throat> okay, so I want these to be a little shorter and wider on top. So I'm thinking maybe five, four, maybe four pixels shorter. And if they're 12, they're about 12 pixels, they should be about 12 pixels tall. Yeah, so this is giving it a lot more of a solid style base. Oh man, my pen keeps crashing on me. Man, pen, what's up your problem today, pen? Stay on, stay on. Okay, let's see what that looks like with them like about like this. Um, this is going to be saved in sprites, rocks, mountain hex, zero. Okay, so we'll see how that's looking. Ah, my pen. Ah, oh, dude, it keeps on crashing. Yeah, Lighter Thief. Yeah, I already got that, man. I'm already, I already checked. Oh, man, my pen. Dude. See, this is the mock-up I started drawing where I, was, I had some grass or whatever I'm going to draw for sure. And these are all going to be totally varietized. This is just one to start with. And there's going to be maybe eight to ten of them totally different. Different shapes. Everything is going to be totally uniqueified and then some of them will have plants hanging off them like this all sorts of ferns and stuff like that yeah oh man dude this is killing me stay on oh might have to draw with my mouse today Dude. Gosh.
Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, you saw that video with like 100 blobs. I did another one where there was like 500 spiders on the screen and it was it was still it was it did drop in its frame rate, but it wasn't that bad. It Adevel, really the the thing I did to optimize it the most was um pre-computing all of the it caches all of the the things it's going to use for the collision system. So here's where it caches all the objects. So Every time it checks for a collision, it has to loop over all the objects that have a collision, for example. And so the, the thing it does is every single time it ticks the game, it goes and it sorts all the objects by their masks and then loops over all the entities with collision components and checks their pointers, checks their, their masks, everything, and then adds them into this cached collision list. So this cached collision list is really what made it speed up like crazy fast. Mobier, yes, you can smoke those. Yes. Uh, so let's see what that looks like with um with a shorter and shorter pillars and wider bases on them too. Hmm. I mean, I like it. I do like it. But I almost think it's a little too much. I wonder if I could go at least like one pixel less. Let's try that. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what made the biggest difference when I was profiling it all and stuff like that. Yeah, good. Thanks, Lighter Thief. Yeah, now that I finally read that article on it, right? It's nice to understand how the perspective is actually supposed to be. And it, you, I'm using about the phi ratio for my perspectives. Okay, cool. Yeah, so now that now it just needs to be a little less height when they're actually separating or when they're um, yeah, when I'm drawing these ones, like instead of 28, it should be like 24 or so. Uh, Sergeant Sam, man, this, this really is a question for you and you only. Um, I don't use C Sharp or Java because I'm, I'm really proficient with C++ and I've used it for, you know, I've used C++ for 20 years now and it's gotten better and better and I love it. And my favorite game, in, one of my favorite game engines is written in it. And, you know, so, but this is, this is a question for you. What do you prefer? What do you prefer C Sharp or Java or C++ or what? You know, even though they're making you learn it at school, um, think about what you would prefer to use yourself. So not only, don't, don't just pigeonhole yourself into those two languages. Learn some other stuff too while you're at school. At least learn some C++. And then... Think about what you would prefer to use in your own project. And that's what I would say do. Oh, as in risk, that's your health. Courage is health. So instead of having hearts or whatever, you actually have courage. And your courage gets low because you're partying. You begin, in the, the beginning of the game, you're high. Like you're really high. And you're eating cactuses and stuff like that. And you're, you have this psychedelic trip going on. And so you're trying to keep the fear at bay. And so this whole game is about fear and courage, and courage is basically just your health. So, okay, so I like that. I like this perspective, but it would be nice if these were a tad bit different in their colors as they started getting higher. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna manually desaturate the colors. So we'll try taking away a little bit of saturation as they climb in height. Yeah, yeah, this is a good thought here from Madeville. I like that. <clears throat> 
Oh, Momir. Yeah, those are um those are demons teeth. So they're um they were meant to be sharks teeth at first and then and then, you know, there really there's only demons in this game. So I was like, mm, I'm just going to make them demons teeth. Well, why didn't that work? Color desaturate. Let's try another tent or a whole tent. Yeah, definitely. Tutorials, highly recommended. Well, maybe, maybe plus. Or uh, I might need to actually just apply a tone after all that. Yeah, because I might be desaturating it and it's already really desaturated. So, yeah, that's probably what it is. So, I'm going to take that let's keep it the same but then apply a tone to this desaturated color Oh, cool. There we go. So that's kind of like making them a little darker as they get higher. So you can just you can see distinctly that one row is and is you can start to see the distinction between rows. I wonder what happened if I did a plus here. Like if you started just like blared out this color. Okay, so that doesn't work. Oh, but we could go, um, H minus I. This is 1.0 minus float H is, say, 3. Oh, this needs to be the maximum height. So let's say the max height is 4. This one is going to be max height. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking too. Yeah, darker, darker at the bottom, lighter on top. Earthier too would be nice to make it change the color, even the hue of it. Yeah, look, man, this is C plus plus. What's up, True Sandwich? Did that work? Max height is say four. Four minus eyes. Some of these eyes are gonna be zero. Let's put max height at three. I think that's right. All I'm trying to do is a slight gradient. As it gets higher up, it Yeah, that's better.
and maybe 0.75 on the desaturate. Thanks, careful moose. Yes, definitely. It's not going to be a pattern. This is just the code first. Um, there's going to be a total. There's going to be a lot of different random different things to add. So not only do, they're not only going to be perfect pillar shapes, and of course there's going to be foliage around them too. Okay, so the first thing we start doing to randomize them is to add a tiny bit of position to each one of them. Like this, adding in a little bit of random one or two pixels here and there. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm not sure why the central pillar is so high. So there, that's a very, very tiny change, you see. Um, but it's it's really having a good effect to just add a tiny bit of X or Y position. In fact, I'm going to try it a little, a little higher. Maybe a little more on the... Uh, we'll try both dimensions to start with. Yeah, I definitely think the art needs a lot of work for sure. I'm probably going to... I'm not sure if I'll even make these procedurally colored. And I'm definitely wondering about that. How, why there's still... Why that central one's too higher? Um, it's one sprite. But yeah, there's multiple frames for that one sprite. Um, yeah, maybe that's it, Momir. Like the very center. So there. That's a little bit too much randomness. Now they're kind of looking a little bit too dirty. So I did like it better with just... Um, uh, like either one to the left, right on, or one to the right. So I'm gonna leave this um, leave this center pillar being too high for now, um, and I'm gonna start focusing on the art because I really think the art is gonna be a fun aspect of this. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Nano? And I do have to do a shorter stream today. Okay, so I'm already I'm already longer than I thought. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna do about 15 more minutes today. So. The goal is to get a bunch of more of these rock pillars drawn so that the variety starts happening. So let's hope my art pen works because otherwise I'm going to have to make art with my mouse and I hate that. All right, cool. Looks like it's working. So here we've got Mountain Hex Zero. This is like. Yeah, so, ah, oh, dude, the mouse just cuts out, ah. Oh. Okay.
Yo, thanks for following. Oh man, draw with the mouse. I feel for you. Ah, oh, see, I'm starting to. Ah, oh. I gotta order a new tablet. Mine's just got janked up. It keeps on glitching on me like crazy today. Come on. I just wanna draw. Oh, I have to use my mouse. All right, whatever, whatever, tablet. I'm unplugging you, tablet. That's how, that's how I feel about you today, tablet. I do have to get the contrast looking good before I do all this stuff. But I guess I can I can get the contrast working for two of them at once. Yeah, Hazenris, I did do that last time. And then what I ended up doing was super gluing the end of it. So it's like super glued shut right here. Cause that's, I was like, oh, what works is if I press it really hard right here. And then it worked for a while, but now it looks like, like it's just, it's just glitching out on me. I need a new one. They're only 75 bucks. And I did try and fix it myself. I guess I could solder it. If I if I could open it up and solder it myself. Damn, that sucks. Whoa. So let's see if that works. Um, we'll do a random choice between mountain hex zero and one. We'll get the actual frame. So int frame equals this get rands three or so x y modded by two mm. oh let's do this like this though string frame equals kit string with format On hex percent D dumping. Then we just pass in frame here. Now I don't know what this is gonna look like because the bases are now gonna be we probably need to do all the bases as mountain hex zero and then the tops can be mountain hex one or two or whatever. That would make sense. Oh, see? Already that's adding a lot of nice variety to this. Having just si just two single frames. And for sure, there's too much darkness. There's definitely too much contrast between that and the floor, like Lighter Thief said. Oh, I wonder if I applied a brighter tone to it. That might work. <laughs> I know what you mean, man. I'm freaking pretty frugal. That's why I'm try that's why I tried to super glue it. I'm like 75 bucks is too much to just go spending all every single day. That's why I eat peanut butter every day too. Peanut butter sandwiches. Okay, so the bottom one, well, let's get the color. Like what if this tone was 2.0? Wouldn't that bright, really brighten this 
color. Thanks for following. Yeah, okay. That's all we had to do is just up the up the amp amp up the tone. So that was way too much though. Oh, another thing to make these a lot more um, distinct is just randomly flipping them left and right. Wow, that's still too bright. Let's do 1.25 maybe. Yes, peanut butter. Right? Yes, peanut butter and honey. It's gotten me. It's got me by for years. There, now it's starting to be about the right tone. Okay, so the first thing I want to do to this is make the bottom frame always mountain X zero. So if I equals zero, then we're going to use mountain X zero. Otherwise frame. Is this legal C++ to pass in either? I guess that works. Okay, and now I want to do randomly flip them over left or right. I think that's... Oh, I would have to do sprite. No, well, I just have to get the sprite and then randomly flip it, so... Auto ref sprite equals this, and then if... Um, this get rand 1f x y is less than 0 0.5. Oh, we just do this um, sprite dot set flipped x. There. So that'll randomly flip them over left or right. So we're gonna get four or twice as many frames. So we know we're now gonna have four frames essentially instead of two. Yeah. What's up, Wolski? There. Now we're starting to get it to look even better. So now we've got some of them, some of them leaning to the right, some of them leaning to the left. All of them on the bot. Oh wait. Oh oh. I only want it to. If I equals H. No. If i is less than h, that's what it is. If it's less than height, then we're going to have to use the base one, and otherwise we can use the other ones. Finally, I got this idea. Oh, Bolski, I'm working on mountains right now. And yay, see, there we go. Now these edge ones can be these random frames. Oh, this is a little bit off. Oh, OK, so um, I need to not move the actual sprite, but just move the, um, like this. I need to check this up, change this up a little bit. So I do a VEC2 offset, and then add this offset into the position of the sprite. There, so now I won't get stuck on their edges. Yeah, totally. Now some foliage and stuff, for sure. Uh, Mystic, no, this is not IntelliJ idea. Is that the sarca- oh, I think you're being sarcastic. Okay. What's up, Doc? What's up? <laughs> you eat peanut butter directly from the jar? That's awesome. Yeah, Wolski for sure. These are all gonna blend better for sure. I'm just this is um you're seeing me kind of hack out the code for it right now mostly. So I'm not really in art mode, I'm more in a code mode. So and yeah, Wolski and Doc, you guys just joined. Um lately I've gotten the teleporter done, so um like you're running around and you use your teleporter, you can go back to your ship. Um. 
It's a pretty sweet noise too. And it warps you back to exactly the same spot you're at too. So like, even if I'm in the top like left of this screen or whatever. Oh, I see another bit. I see another problem with it. So even if I'm in that top left corner, it's gonna warp me back to that exact same spot. Like even if I'm over here in this side of this screen, it'll put me back to that same screen, same exact spot. And you pick up your teleporter and you're done. So I'm seeing now that I forgot to use the right kind of blending sprite. So you see how these rocks are start sticking out? Because they're not being blended properly. So I gotta use a blend sprite for that. Oh, these are all sarcastic. Okay. Kappa, Kipo, and Kappa Pride. <laughs> hey, by the way, there's Pride this weekend. And congratulations to everybody. If anybody, if anybody is going to Pride or whatever, I'm, I'm so excited for y'all and the new laws and stuff, so that's cool. Um, <clears throat> Zyga, is Xcode better than Visual Studio? Um, no. They're both, you know, they're both equally awesome IDEs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this ship's turning out good too, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so these need to be kit sprite blends. Yeah, this is going to change the coloring too. So let's, I got to make sure this is all looking good now that that coloring is going to be a little different. Should make them darker a bit in the corners. Jacob, yeah, this is C11. Momir, what, what you saying here? Need such boxed in RL? What, what you mean? What's in the box? What you mean? Yay! There now. Now these are these are actually properly shaded. See now now that the these left ones are in the shade, they're actually properly shaded. So that's good. And they still look to be about the right contrast. I'm liking the way... Yeah, I'm really liking this, actually. This adds a really good 3D element to the game. In fact, I think I might want to make these a little shorter. Especially because this one here in the middle is, like, super tall now. Master Race. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, keep trying some engines, man. Yeah, don't don't give up until you've tried like a bunch. And it takes a while to get used to those engines too. So make sure and do a tutorial or two or three before you even say, you know, you don't like an engine. So give each engine this, you know, a proper chance and just remember that it takes a while to get used to it. Uh, Sergeant Sam, yes, there are some things I code, but I can't show you. Um, one of them is uh, one of my shaders. I've never shown that on a, on a stream because it took me literally two weeks to finish the shader. And um, I don't know, it's just my, it's my secret sauce. You know what I mean? I show you guys basically everything else, though. You, you've seen, if you go back and look at all my YouTube videos, you've seen every single file, every single thing I've developed in this whole game, except for that one shader. But I'm happy to share, tell you how I developed the shader and how you can do it yourself too. And I've shared links on how to do it several times. Oh, it's a movie reference. Oh. Uh, I know, yeah, he's flying through the rocks and that's that's by design currently so he doesn't get stuck on anything. Uh, Zyga, when I finish the game, it's coming out on Steam. And then I'll keep on working on the game for a whole year because it's got to come out on iOS, Android, or at least iOS and Retro VGS. Yeah, Bard Mode, that's the next step, man. So, um, 
So this is the mock-up drawing I did at the very start of this here to just like, so, you know, here's a plant, for example. Let's put this plant in the game now. a hairy pillar. Mm, this obviously is not the best plant I've ever drawn either, so I'm just, I'm really doing this quite fast, you guys. I will be updating all this art like crazy tonight. Mountain Hex Plant Zero. Okay, so now let's randomly put some plants on the top. So like if this get rand whatever, 3x, y, she would do rand 3f. So less than, see, let's look, there'll be like a 25% chance to be a plant on top. Mountain X plant zero. Position, uh, yeah, render. I was probably to get on. Let's get the auto size of all this. And size dot width here. Here size dot width as well. And it's 24 times I, but I is, is going to be the very top one. So H is really what we want to do, plus offset. That's good, that's good. And this is Z of 1 plus, 2 plus H, actually. And then no toning, no color. And then flip it randomly. There we go, there we go. <laughs> you guys having a discussion about what language? What language to start writing games in? Assembly? There, so now we got some, some bushes, partially. Um, you know, the coloring, the coloring's not right on those bushes, so, and I need to add some shading to the bushes as well, and like, um, uh, like Bard Mode was just saying, Bar um, it's a good thought, Bard Mode, to add some, some stuff to the very bottoms of them to make them blend in with the dirt a little bit more, so I'll be doing that too. But I do have to say, I have to bid you guys adieu for the night, I got a lot of stuff to do, I gotta go, like, to the store and get groceries and stuff and do regular stuff tonight so um, I gotta get off and do that so and I'll be back later tonight I'll be um, tonight I'll be making the art for this look a lot better so I'm really excited about this now that I can create piles of rocks and make them look kind of quasi 3d this is really neat so this is a good step so um, yeah later on I will be working on that and then I'll be back tomorrow and showing you guys what the heck happened so that's it for today you guys Yeah, looking better. <clears throat> I missed the next schedule for the next series of my life. Uh, yeah, stream tomorrow, you guys.